Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Luke chapter 4 verse 17, Genesis chapter 17 verse 6, and Isaiah chapter 47 verse 6. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Lord God for the gifts, the talents that you have given us. Lord God, help us to be humble. Help us to be used by you, Lord God. Help us to... Do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Luke chapter 4, verse 17. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to you. He given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. All right. And so this is Jesus. He's in the synagogue and he is about to read from the the scroll, right, um, where he talks about um, today this this scripture was fulfilled. And then he, he had given a, a quote from Isaiah. And so the quote was speaking about um, the fact that, you know, good news had been proclaimed, um, uh, sight to the blind, um, all these different things that Christ fulfilled, right? And then after he spoke those words, he said, today, this has been fulfilled in your presence. And so they at first, you know, marveled and, and they thought that it was great, right? They thought, okay, wow, this prophet is saying that this scripture is now being fulfilled. This prophecy is now coming to pass. But then of course, um, you know, they began to doubt, right? And then they began to be angry with him because he he talked about the fact that, you know, um, he, uh, a prophet is not accepted in his own hometown, right? Because they wanted him to do miracles, basically prove yourself, right? And so, you know, Christ let them know, you know, that in their own home, he he wouldn't have been accepted. And, you know, he, he quoted the fact that only Naaman um, was the only leper that had been healed. Um, not Not all of those lepers that were in Israel, um, in the Old Testament. And so they were outraged and they tried to throw Jesus off of a cliff, right? But the point um, here that I felt like the Lord was showing me was just that, you know, Jesus had an appointment, right? He had a time, he had a season. And, you know, he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is God, right? He is God made flesh, the Word made flesh. And so his appointment was as a king, right? And yet he humbled himself and taught the people and fulfilled the scripture. He 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 healed the sick. He he brought people out of bondage, right? And so he did what the scripture um had had prophesied, right? He was responsible to his calling and and he made it happen right? He didn't allow the criticism and the naysayers to stop him, to to cause him to be thwarted, right? He didn't allow all the forces of darkness that were trying to work against him to stop him from doing the will of the Father. He did it anyway, right? Amongst all the skeptics, amongst all the people who were going to try to throw him off a cliff, right? He, he, he did it anyway. He stood before the people with boldness. He, he healed the sick, right? He did it anyway. And we can look at the life of Christ and, and be strengthened, right? Because as believers, you might come up against, um, you might butt heads with some things that, you know, you're uncomfortable with, but you have to press on just like Christ stood up in front of this crowd. He did it anyway, he pressed on. He did not live a comfortable life. He led an uncomfortable life. He led a life, um, you know, that was pleasing to the father, right? Uh, in the midst of the naysayers. And so that's the kind of life that God wants us to look at and see as, you know, the way we should live. When Holy Spirit is leading us into uh, positions and appointments and, and um, you know, leadership roles and, and all of these things, 
we should not resist them if Holy Spirit is doing that thing. We have a responsibility to our calling. We have a responsibility to the thing that has God has appointed us to. And we shouldn't get off the path. Amen. All right, let's look at Genesis chapter 17, verse six. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make you into nations and kings shall come from you. All right, and so this was a promise of God um, to Abraham, right? And so um, Abraham knew that his role was important. He was to have um, this seed and the seed would just uh, be, you know, fruitful throughout the world, right? It wasn't just a physical child. Yes, it was Isaiah, I mean, Isaac, but it was also a spiritual seed, right? By faith, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. So he had a responsibility to uphold the calling that he had on his life. He had a responsibility even when he didn't ever see a physical child for so many years, even when, you know, the promises look like maybe they had died, right? Abraham still believed God and he continued to walk in the wilderness. He didn't turn back and go back to Ur, right? He didn't, he didn't turn back. He kept going forward in the things that God um, put before him, even when they were uncomfortable. And, you know, this is a season of uncomfortability for many believers. Why? <laughs> Because God is separating us, right? God is keeping us um, holy as unto himself in, in the last days. And he doesn't want us looking like the rest of the world, right? We have a calling to uphold. We have some some leadership positions in, in the kingdom. And, and we have some leadership positions in the kingdom to come, right? Rulerships. And so we need to even now walk out that calling, walk out that responsibility. It says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make you into nations and kings shall come from you. It doesn't stop with you, right? What you're doing is planting seeds and seeds can create forests, right? Seeds can, can blossom and cause other people to thrive. Seeds can, can do so many things, but if you never plant the seed, if you're not faithful to your calling, it'll never get in the ground, right? And so how will they hear unless they have a preacher? How will they they be able to, to experience the gospel if you never give it to them? How will, you know, your calling be fulfilled if you don't do it? Right? So Jesus, Jesus stood before those crowds even when it was uncomfortable. Even when it could have cost him his life so early, he had faith in God that he was going to fulfill his calling, even unto death, right? You know, he could have he could have allowed them to kill him and gotten it over with, right? But he had a mission to fulfill. He still had stuff he had to do. He had people he had to heal. He had, you know, things that, that weren't done yet, right? And and so, you know, part of the prophecy was fulfilled, the part that he re read, but he needed to die on that cross, right? And so, you know, he fulfilled his mission. He did the will of the Father, not his own will, right? It says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make you into nations and kings shall come from you. You are a part of those nations that are made from Abraham. You are a part of the blossoming of the plant that comes from that seed, right? You are a fruit, right? You are part of this fruitfulness um, that Abraham has been blessed with. Stand firm in faith and be faithful to your calling. Um, it says, and I will make you into nations and kings shall come from you. Are you a king? We don't know. You might be a king in the next, in the world to come, right? But you need to remain faithful to your calling. You need to remain faithful to God because he has been faithful to you. Amen. All right. Isaiah chapter 47, verse six. I was angry with my people. I profaned my heritage. I gave them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. On the aged, you make your yoke exceedingly 
heavy. All right. And so, you know, when when this was going on, this was during the time um, of the Babylonian captivity of the children of Israel. And so this is a, a word spoken against them. Right. Um, even though God allowed them and use them to check the children of Israel. Um, God allowed them to take them into bondage and captivity. Um, even still, you know, he he chose to um, speak down to them, right? Let's look at the words. It says, I was angry with my people. I profane my heritage. So God is saying here, yeah, he was mad at his own people. Yeah, he, he, he did um, get angry with them. And he profaned his heritage. So so the people who were supposed to inherit, the people who were supposed to be his seed, he turned his back on what, what was holy. You know, he, he treated it as common for a moment, right? It says, I was angry with my people. I profaned my heritage. I gave them into your hand. And so he's speaking of the Chaldeans of, of Babylon, right? And so he gave them up. He gave them over to, to, to be taken into bondage, right? It says, you showed them no mercy. Hmm, uh-oh, right? So there's a turn here. Even though God um wanted them to, to be used to... um to to get the children of Israel back into their place he he wanted them to be in captivity there was no mercy in this captivity right and so even though God allowed this they were still going to be held accountable for this right it says you showed them no mercy on the aged you made your yoke exceedingly heavy so God is going to even judge them, these kings that have been appointed, these kings that he has allowed to be set in place, these people who have taken his children into bondage. He's going to come in and, and come against them and judge them for how they treated those who he allowed to come into their bondage. So just because you're put into a position where you can um, exhaust power and show power and, and have a strong arm, it does not mean that you should, right? It does not mean just because you are justified, Help me, Holy Spirit, you know, just because you are justified in your own eyes, it does not mean that you should go about doing that that way, right? It, it does not mean that that's being faithful to your appointment. God wants us to be faithful. He wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to stand firm in faith. And, you know, even when times and trials are coming against us and things are getting frustrating and, you know, you know where God called you to stand firm in faith, it can get hard. It can get uncomfortable, right? Walking out this calling, but we have to, and I'm preaching to myself too, right? Knowing the things that I know um, that God has spoken to me about, sometimes it can get very frustrating and I need his help. I need him close and near me. I need him to guide me, right? One step at a time. And it's a little step, right? Sometimes it's a really little step. And so we have to put our trust in God. We have to stand firm in faith. We have to let him be our God. Just because we have certain powers and certain abilities and gifts that God has given us, we don't need to manipulate or um, um, wrongfully use those powers, right? God wants us to be accountable for how we do things, just like he wanted Babylon to be accountable for how he treated his children in bondage, right? Yeah, God was mad, but that didn't give them the right to treat his children um, with no mercy to, to make their yoke exceedingly heavy. Remember earlier, the scripture was talking about with the same measure you judge, you're going to be judged, 
right? So we have to be careful about how we're treating others in the positions that God has appointed us. And, and we need to be using our gifts and our callings, but we need to be using them with that same accountability to God and Holy Spirit as we're walking it out, right? Not just treating people any old way, not just um, um, walking through the calling without um, having discretion and mercy and grace. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. We need it, Lord. We need it in this hour. The enemy is busy. God, forgive us for our sins and help us to know what to do, Lord God, moment by moment, day by day, hour by hour. We give you all of the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.